Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. My name is Michaela Leonardi. I work in the Evolutionary Ecology Group at the University of Cambridge in the Department of Zoology. And thank you also to the organizers of the Cambridge Zero Climate Change Festival. It's really an honor for me to be here. So uh, today we will be, uh, I will be talking to you about uh, climate change and board games. So basically, we know that climate change is not a game. It's a very serious matter, actually. But uh, I created a board game, an educational one, that can be used to see what uh, the impact of climate change is through time on animal species. So um, this game is uh, is free, is uh, av freely available from my website. This is the, the link. And uh, basically you can either um, download the files and print it at home, and uh, basically you will find uh, you will have some, uh, some something like that that you can then cut and uh, and prepare for the game or the other option is that you can play it online there's a, a, a free uh, version of the game that is online where you can play with friends or family and uh, and uh, all the instructions are on the side so uh, as we were saying, uh, this game is based on, uh, on, on the impact on animal species of climate change. We will be focusing on uh, large mammals and the reason for that is that the game is based on, on the research that is done in the group I'm part of, which is the Evolutionary Ecology Group uh, in the Department of Zoology. And we mainly work with large mammals, not only we have been doing other uh, work, but uh, with large mammals, terrestrial mammals, it's easier to see movement uh, and this kind of things. So, about climate change, that may be a surprise for you, but we will see uh, at first the natural climate change. So, this is an important point because we are so used to hear about anthropic climate change, which means the climatic changes we can observe right now because of uh, the activity, the human activity. But uh, this is not the only climate change that exists because we also have a natural one. So if you look at the temperature and the CO2 levels through time in the last 800,000 years, you can see here in this horizontal line 800,000 years on the left and the zero on the right and this is the present this is the past and you can see that the level of temperature and of co2 those two are related has um, been varying a lot through time and that means that we had periods in which the climate was uh, much uh, warmer and uh, periods in, in which the climate was much colder and that was uh, that was changing things quite a lot so I'm based in Cambridge and I believe many of you are also in surrounding areas. And uh, let's say 21,000 years ago, Cambridge was completely covered in ice. And uh, if we look at places like, I don't know, Paris, uh, Berlin, where now we have forest and nice uh, uh, green areas, they were like the pictures on the right of my screen so it was too cold for trees to grow and uh, it was uh, and during winter it was always covered in nice like areas that right now are in northern Europe like um, Iceland for example or in mountainous areas which means that in Central Europe you could see mammoths and if you are familiar with the movie Ice Age, you know they were living in a very, very cold environment, which is really not the, the kind of climate you would see if you would visit Paris today, right? So this aspect in the game is uh, present uh, because we have different boards. So basically, we have different levels of temperature that you can see here on, next, on, on the board 
itself, you have this bar that goes from colder to warmer, and then the climate may change in the game, and you may see that the environment changes too. And uh, you can see in the board that you have four different colors. Those colors are because we have four different habitats. So obviously those are not all the habitats that are available in the world or through uh, a gradient of temperature and rain, but uh, those are just a few very uh, clear ones. So we have the savanna where the temperature is high, it's very hot, but it doesn't rain a lot. So basically you don't have many trees and you have uh, quite, um, quite a lot of uh, grasses. Then in, uh, uh, in, in green, in light green, you have uh, the tropical forest. So it rains a lot in a tropical forest, but the temperature is still hot. Then in dark blue, you have uh, um, the temperate forest, which is what we would see in, let's say, Central Northern Europe. And uh, basically, in th this place, the temperature is definitely not as hot as uh, in a tropical forest, but it still rains. And then we have the tundra. The tundra is this uh, habitat that you can see in Northern Europe, as we were saying before, like in Siberia, in, uh, in Russia, or in um, Iceland. So those areas where it's uh, too cold for trees to grow, and uh, there's this um, this uh, grass vegetation, and there's always snow in the winter. So, for the sake of simplicity, in the game, every player starts as a, as an animal species, a large mammal species, living in the savanna. And um, we are not uh, looking at which specific species we are. We just want to know that we live in the savanna and we are large mammals. So let's introduce another important part of the game, which is DNA. So DNA is a molecule that is inside our cells that gives the instruction for an organism, so any uh, living being, to how this uh, living being is and works. So the Everything that goes from what you eat, for example, what you're able to digest, that may be grass or, I don't know, fruit or meat or fish or um, how you look like. So the skin color in the case of large mammals, of course, the, the pattern of the fur, but also the type of fur. So if you have a, a short or long hair, and also the body size and shape. So if you're a very big animal like an elephant or a very small one like a mouse. And uh, all those characteristics that are basically written and coded in the DNA are very important to live in a, in a habitat or, or, in, or in another one. Because let's think about color. If you're yellow, and you're, for example, an herbivore, you will be the prey to carnivores around you. And uh, if you live in the savanna, your uh, yellowish color will, um, will, um, will be similar to the grassland you have around you. So it will be easy for you to escape, to not be seen by predators around. At the same time, if you're bright yellow, in a dark green forest, everybody will see you. And the same goes, for example, for the type of fur you have, because obviously if it's very, very hot, you don't need a long fur, you don't need something that keeps you hot because it's hot outside. But if it's uh, very cold outside, then you really need a, a strong fur to protect you from cold. So uh, this is shown in the game by the genome board. So we have the genome board here, and basically we can see that we have the four habitats here and three different genes up here. So the three genes uh, code for the three uh, different characters we have seen before. So body size, 
sulfur coloring type and metabolism. And which means that when you start in the savanna, you already have your DNA in uh, the gene variant that is associated to the, um, to the habitat you live in, which means that you're able to live in that habitat and you're happy there and you're perfectly adapted. And um, something that happens in nature is that you may move. Animals can move. They, a lot of them do that. So in the game, it may be possible to move. And uh, sometimes it's actually not possible because there are also geographic barriers that may be rivers or mountains or just uh, a strange path, strange places where it's impossible for you as an animal to pass through. And so in the game, sometimes animals can move and sometimes they cannot. And now let's go to the core of the game, which is what we are discussing today together, which is climate change. So uh, climate change doesn't happen always. It, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So in the game, it just happens if you throw the dice and uh, a specific value come out. And then you go from a, a specific uh, board to another one, for example. And uh, if you look at the board, the distribution of the habitats based on the temperature and the precipitation may be different. So if you were in cell number 42, with a, a small, uh, which is here, you may, uh, before you were in the savanna, but after you would be in the tropical forest which means this is an environment you're not adapted to. This is a climate you're not adapted to. So just imagine from today, the climate changes and it starts snowing all the time. So you're in Cambridge, you're in a place where the summer is pretty nice and the winter is cold, but not so cold. And it starts snowing all the time. And it's so terribly cold. What would you do? Of course, for us, the, the easiest option would be just go out, to, you go to the shop and you buy new clothes and uh, you buy new, a new duvet and everything is fine. The other option could be that after so much time, you're so frustrated that you just say, you know what, I will move south. I will move in a place where it's warmer, when I, where I feel better. So the option of moving to track back the climate you're used to is what, what is what is easier for animals. And so you, that's what animals normally do if it's possible for them. Because sometimes, as we have seen before, there's no option because there could be geographic barriers that doesn't allow, they, that don't allow them to move. So the second option that would be for us to buy new clothes for animals is a little bit more complicated because it involves a very complex mechanism that is changing the DNA, which is what we were saying before, codes for code color, code type, metabolism, and so on. So basically, in the game, you can actually change the value of your genes from a value that uh, adapts you to the savanna, for example, to the value that adapts you to the tropical forest and so on, because you earn at every turn some mutation uh, cards. So those mutation cards basically can allow you to change the value of your gene, plus one or minus one for the body, the color, the metabolism. And then you have two special cards, a few special cards actually, which are the deleterium mutation, that are mutations that sometimes happen in our DNA that give us a bad, uh, a bad effect, an effect that, is, that doesn't allow the organism to live better and uh, normally it creates some problem. And, and some neutral mutation that happen quite often in our DNA and they just don't have an effect. And so basically using the cards, you can change the value of your gene to adapt to the new environment and basically, this is what is known from quite a lot of time right now 
to be the basis of the wonderful um, diversity of life we know because this is what is called natural selection so the habitat changes you have mutation that arrive on your dna by chance because it's not like you're choosing to have a new mutation you're like in the game you're drawing a card a random card in the in real life a mutation occurs or not you cannot control it but if you have the right mutation at the right time and you need to change habitat for any reason then you can use this mutation and you will be a little bit different than your parents that didn't have this mutation and with time this will lead to an enormous uh, uh, diversity which is the diversity we observe around in nature so there's another option if you're not if you don't carry the mutations, you need to evolve and uh, you cannot move. Well, it doesn't go very well. You may recognize this animal, but I'm pretty sure you haven't ever seen it in real life, a living one, because those are dinosaurs and they, got, they, they went extinct. So basically, if you're not able to move and if you're not able to adapt, you just go extinct. So, in the game, the aim, the final aim, is to adapt to the four different um, habitats that we have. But uh, be careful, this is something that is just for the game. This is not what happens in, in, in nature. Because in nature, we don't, uh, animals don't care. They don't go for the next habitat at any time. They just try to survive. So if they are forced to stay in a place where the climate is not what they are adapted to, they try to change if they have the mutation to do so. But if not, they will just go extinct. So survival is the aim of the game in nature. So I have now presented you this game. And uh, this is a way of discussing climate change, natural climate change with friends, so to have quite a lot of fun. But this is not the only climate change we know, right? Uh, you may be uh, familiar with these kind of images, you may be familiar with um, um, Fridays for Future, and uh, you may be familiar with the uh, words climate change in a different uh, situation as the one I've been talking to you about, about the last uh, thousand millions of years. Uh, the reason for that is the recently, in the last few hundred years, I, I would say even 100 years, uh, human activities have changed the climate because we are polluting the environment, uh, putting, um, adding CO2 in the environment by a lot of different human activities and that changes the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. So we have been seeing this graph before. This is the value 800,000 years ago. This is the value now. And you, we see that there's some variation, but this is not the real value now. The real value one week ago was, was here which means uh, this is the maximum we have been seeing in the past, around 300, and we are at 411. So this means that the level of CO2 in the atmosphere is so high that we are literally meant changing the climate with, with our hands. So if we want to see this kind of... Um, of climate change, the anthropic one, the, the human activity associated one, in the game, we need to change it a bit and we need to change the climate at every turn. We don't throw the dice anymore because the kind of change we are seeing right now is so much faster than the one we have observed in nature. And that's basically our problem, because it's so fast that if you play the game under this option, changing the climate so often, you will see that you're not able to survive, because it, there's not enough time for you 
to collect mutation that allow you or the animal species to survive to the changes. And so you lose the game, but it's not just that we lose the game, but we became loser. We lose much, much more. So that's why it's so important to take part to uh, this kind of activity, these kind of festivals. I'm, and I'm so, so happy to, to be part of the, this Cambridge Zero Climate Change Festival today because it means that we are really thinking about it, we are really discussing it, we are together, we can try to find a way to solve this enormous issue that we are facing right now and to win the game even with, when human activities are involved. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Please uh, keep doing your best as you're doing participating to the festival in helping the environment uh, uh, survive, to helping the, the climate change not be so, so fast. I would like to thank you for being here and for listening to me. And uh, you can see here my uh, website where you can find the board game and my Twitter and Instagram handle if you want to get in contact with me. There is also a content module on my website. And uh, I would like to thank a lot the Cambridge Zero to, for having invited me, invited me to this uh, festival and the Evolutionary Ecology Group in Cambridge to, uh, that helped me develop this uh, game and helped me test this game. So it was a very, very funny work evenings. And the Museum of Zoology, for which this game was first uh, developed to do outreach in person. And then COVID arrived and things changed for everybody. And so thank you everybody and uh, I hope you had fun and I hope you will have fun playing the game.